Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure and honor to be here and, uh, and addressing um, distinguished audience. Um, today, as um, Madam Moderator um, briefly mentioned, I'll try to uh, present you the a new initiative. Um, it's um, a Global Geothermal Alliance, a new global initiative that was um, started very recently. I mean, the process started a long time ago, but the, um, the initiative uh, has been uh, launched uh, officially a couple of months ago during COP21 in Paris. And I'll try to introduce you the initiative and, uh, as a platform for dialogue, cooperation and coordinated action of, of various uh, stakeholders, players, uh, geothermal players um, on the ground. So um, briefly on, on, on geothermal, I think I don't need to um, explain it to you probably. This, this is already very well known to, to most of you. But as you know, geothermal is a technology, it's a clean and mature technology. Um, it offers um, a power, base load, um, base load power, and whenever needed, flexibility. Um, it, is an, it is basically an, a zero emission um, resource um, and its environmental impact is uh, insignificant. Um, but the question is, why the modest growth? So it is just growing around 3 to 4% where compared to uh, some other renewable energy technologies which, which are growing much faster. Uh, but uh, what are the main challenges that the sector is facing? I think some of these challenges has already been uh, discussed, I think, in, in different sessions and will be also raised maybe uh, later today. Um, of course, very well known, the, um, the exploratory risk and resource assessment um, risk, uh, the high cost and associated risks, policy uncertainty um, and the absence of uh, clear and long-term vision of governments um, committed to development of geothermal energy and related um, regulatory um, arrangements, which includes um, issues related to, to how to deal with the environmental aspects, how to deal with licensing, how to deal with permitting, etc. Um, on the capacity side, um, the um, lack of institutional capacity in many countries and the developing countries as especially, and shortage of skilled personnel. personnel. Um, and um, maybe it's the one of the main uh, challenges is the low awareness and limited information in decision makers, in the governments and in utilities. And um, that's the, the, the sector is facing and which is an impact on the pace of growth um, of uh, geothermal development. So the starting point for geothermal, global geothermal allies is this question, whether international cooperation and strategic partnerships ha can help overcome key geothermal challenges and to what extent. So, Global Geothermal Alliance has been developed as a response to this question. Um, as I told you dur uh, during COP21, um, the, um, it, th there was this official launch and there was a joint communique on the Global Geothermal Alliance released by the members and partners of the Alliance which are committing to work together, co closely cooperate, to address to these challenges and to unlock the potential um, in many countries that the sector is facing. So it, is, it has not been an easy process. It was a long and windy road. And the, uh, it started in early 2014 and over the, over the last two years, um, there has been extensive consultations, discussions um, among governments, um, with the private sector, with the industry, with uh, regional organizations, financial institutions, and to see um, what is needed and what should be the priorities and what, what should be the structure and um, the operational principles of the alliance, etc. So it has it started in the um, 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 in early 2014 and in, at several. Um, 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 platforms, and some of them are, are, are shown in this, um, on this slide, uh, but also there has been a lot of uh, bilateral discussions, uh, multilateral dialogue, face-to-face um, -face meetings, um, video conferences, teleconferences to, to come to this point. So basically it was only uh, at the end of last year that we were able to uh, finalize the, 
the concept and uh, come to an agreement among an important number of uh, countries and other partners to launch the initiative. Um, so, of course, I mean, what's the what um, the main objective of the alliance? Of course, the, the main objective is to how to increase the penetration of um, geothermal energy into the energy mix um, as in the form of um, power generation, but also um, through uh, other uh, non-power applications related to geothermal use. Uh, but we also set an aspirational goal uh, for Global Geothermal Alliance, which is um, increasing um, up, to f uh, up to five times the, um, uh, in, in geothermal power and more than doubling of geothermal heat. So where do these um, um, numbers come from? It comes from IRENA's analysis. IRENA's analysis, which is called REMAP 2030, um, which tells us that basically REMAP 2030 is an, um, an analysis about how to operationalize um, UN's target of doubling um, renewable energy share by 2030. So within that component, we looked at um, specifically for the geothermal, and we have seen that not only doubling, but increasing five times the geothermal power is possible, it's feasible. It's technically feasible, it is economically feasible. So we have set this um, uh, ambitious goal um, as an uh, aspirational target of Global Geothermal Alliance. So who are the partners, members and partners of the Global Geothermal Alliance? As you see, it's, an, it's across the globe. There are 40 countries already affiliated to, to, to Global Geothermal Alliance. And, um, and those countries are, uh, some of them are with um, developed, already, uh, developed um, uh, geothermal markets and some of them are emerging geothermal markets. Um, and um, those countries have already expressed um, their commitment to be part of this initiative. And additional 27 uh, partners have already expressed interest and commitment uh, to be part of the alliance. So um, there are, among those, there are regional organizations, there are global organizations, international organizations, there are uh, IFIs, international financing institutions, um, multilateral development banks, uh, bilateral institutions. There are industry partners. Industry partners basically represented through uh, national associations, national or international or regional associations. Um, there, are, there are also uh, various um, research institutions and representatives of academia. So basically, uh, Alliance is bringing together um, all stakeholders relevant to the uh, different segments of, um, of uh, geothermal supply chain um, around the table to, to develop a dialogue and, and cooperation. So what are the main areas of functionality of Global Geothermal Alliance? Of course, it's a platform for dialogue and cooperation that I, I repeat telling you. So it's basically how to create synergies, how to use the complementarity of different strengths offered by different, um, um, different members and partners, and how to avoid duplications of efforts also. That's also an important aspect, because there are so many players on the ground and not necessarily talking to each other, and, um, and creating that platform will help um, overcome such challenges um, um, that uh, we think the, the alliance will um, will help enhancing. Um, partnership for coordinate, coordinated action, I will come to that point in the next slide, but basically how we can um, coordinate the efforts, how we can um, um, try to bring together the partners who are interested in, uh, who are committed to support certain initiatives and and, and bring them together around that, that specific initiative to have a very targeted action in terms of technical assistance, capacity building, that will lead to unlocking investments. And outreach and raising awareness is an important aspect because we see a lot of times that geothermal, although it deserves, deserves it, but it, it's, it doesn't, um, it, it was, it's not demonstrated as, um, as significantly as other, for instance, other renewable energy technologies in, um, in global climate debates and, and, and also some of the uh, energy debates taking place. So how to raise the profile and visibility of geothermal um, in, in those platforms. So coming back to partnership for coordinated action. So basically the, the focus of 
the, the action is how to unlock geothermal investment projects that are facing policy, legal, regulatory, fiscal, funding and capacity building challenges. So all sorts of challenges they are facing. So identify those, um, those, those investment projects and try to solve the, the, the associated challenges with those projects so that these projects can materialize, can, can start, can, can, um, the investments can take place. Um, so, of course, I mean, um, we need to have um, the, our actions, the Global Geotherm Alliance's actions should lead to impact. So how, how can we uh, ensure that impact? So why don't we, that's why the discussion was, an agreement was, the how to enable most mature projects or countries with transformative potential so that um, the, the results that would result in high impact on energy mix, on access rate or kind of um, in the, um, the, um, the economy of the country in overall. So the assistance will be in the form of various ways. So it could be to, to, through strengthening, enabling policy and regulatory frameworks, to raising awareness on and propose improvements on risk mitigation funds, targeted financing mechanisms, facilitate access to financing and risk mitigation instruments, and, and, and enhance capacities. So these are some of the actions that Alliance can take, uh, can take um, in order to uh, address those challenges that are blocking, uh, hindering the, 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 uh, the investments in, in, in geothermal. So what are the operational principles? Of course, the neutrality and transparency. That's uh, um, 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 most importantly, uh, IRENA being on the facilitator and coordinator side of the, this uh, initiative, it's extremely important that uh, the uh, alliance is operated in a neutral, neutral and transparent basis. So there's no, tra no preferential treatment for a particular country, technology and scheme. So it's an, um, everything is taking place on equal grounds. Um, of course, um, I mentioned about the, uh, the avoidance of duplications and, um, and overlaps. That's why it's important to see what is already on the ground and build on it. So existing structures, programs and facili uh, facilities um, 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 should be taken as a starting point in building um, the additional structures and, and, and cooperation mechanisms. Um, we, from the start, we didn't want to put in complicated administrative procedures, um, structures and processes and try to make it uh, action-oriented. So basically, um, rather than creating um, different bodies, uh, decision-making uh, structures and governing boards, etc. So we try to make it very action-oriented and to avoid bureaucracy. Um, and in that uh, perspective, uh, now the Alliance is working on an um, action plan. It's a work program. Um, so basically trying to identify the key priority actions that the Alliance should focus on. We try, we, we are envisaging that within uh, a month time, um, this action plan will be finalized and um, and endorsed by the, uh, by the Alliance. So in terms of operational uh, principles, what um, the Alliance is going to do, they are going to identify specific activities under this action plan, and they will go back to its constituency, members and partners, and they're going to ask to them that, are you interested to support this particular activity? And are you ready to, use, um, to finance this activity, provide uh, funding support to this activity. So around each activity, there will be uh, an, a number of uh, members and partners uh, who are uh, already committed to, uh, to support this particular activity so that um, that's uh, small groups of activities with, uh, to take the action forward and basically to come up with then results in, an, in the shortest uh, possible uh, time. In terms of priorities of actions, of course, we developed also an, uh, a criteria in selection of, uh, of actions and projects that could be supported by the Alliance. Of course, I mean, if you, if you're going to do a project and, and an activity in one country, uh, there should be an uh, acceptance and interest expressed by the recipient government or re regional organization or whoever recipient is. Uh, of that um, uh, GGA's technical support. So that, that's an important um, um, criteria. Um, contribute to near-term improvements of enabling frameworks for investment, so the action should lead to outcome. 
um, and sustained impact on fostering geothermal deployment. So the most impactful activities to be to be to be chosen. Um, of course, it's the complementarity with activities of other development partners. So basically. Um, in one country or one region, if the activity is uh, envisaged, so it should be it should take into consideration what's already on the ground and to complement it rather than compete with it. And as much as possible, the activities chosen should be replicable elsewhere in another country or in another region. So that will help scaling up the impact. <coughs> so what's the role of IRENA in the GGA? It has two functions. One is the, to coordinate and facilitate the GGA activities. So it's about coordinating the work program, organizing meetings, um, to help in the selection of uh, priority projects that um, the, the uh, alliance is going to focus on, um, etc. But there's a second function, which is the supporting regional and country-specific uh, activities. Of course, they should be in, in line with IRENA's own um, work program. And, um, and the availability of resources, so basically IRENA also uh, can uh, take part in some of those activities, not necessarily in all of the activities, uh, but in some of the activities IRENA can, can um, be part of um, the, um, the group of um, um, uh, GGA members and, um, and um, partners who are supporting that specific activity. Of course, IRENA has al already several uh, regional or thematic uh, programs which are um, taking place under IRENA work program. Uh, SITS Lighthouses is a support program for, for, for islands. So in, in Pacific and especially in Pacific and in Caribbean, um, there are various islands um, which, are of, um, uh, which, are, which have um, uh, rich um, geothermal resources, so the under uh, the SITS Lighthouses program, the geothermal aspect, geothermal part is also quite significant. Um, clean energy corridors that we have been implementing in different parts of the world, so basically how to integrate more renewables into the national um, systems as well as how to promote cross-border trade of renewable electricity. We are implementing in Africa, uh, in the eastern southern Africa, of course in the eastern Africa, um, and countries, it's very relevant, geothermal aspects are very relevant. Now we started implementing in Central America also, that's very relevant. So uh, wherever it's relevant, the geothermal aspects are al already taken, um, um, taken into uh, consideration. And there are two new uh, initiatives that IRENA started. Uh, one is the Pacific Capacity Building Initiative as well as the, um, the methodology for skills needs assessment that we have developed during our project in Andes region. So we, want to we are planning to implement it in, in other regions to help countries to make a uh, thorough assessment of, of skills, geothermal skill set that they have and what, what is needed, what is not. On top of that, of course, IRENA has a um, rich toolbox of um, um, of various instruments that make it's making available to uh, the to the Global Geothermal Alliance, renewable readiness assessment, post uh, RRA advisory technical assistance, the remap that I have already referred to earlier, as well as there are certain um, 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 key uh, flagship initiatives such as sustainable energy marketplace. Uh, which was initiated in different parts of the world to how to it's a matchmaking service between the projects and and financial institutions and how to facilitate access to financing. Um, Global Atlas is the uh, tool uh, for resource assessment. There's a um, geothermal um, um, component of Global Atlas which is providing uh, geothermal resource maps um, globally. So these are the uh, some of the tools. That, are, uh, that IRENA is offering, and also with the help of the GGA, we want to further develop those tools um, and, and, and make, make them available for um, our membership, for the GGA membership and, and, and the partners. So finally, final words on the alliance is basically success and sustainability of alliance depends on various factors, but um, most importantly maybe, of course, and continue, continuing commitment and participation of its members and partners is essential. And their, the credibility of the alliance as an authoritative sort of information um, that will also have an impact on that. But most importantly, the actions that alliance is going to take should lead to substantial impact uh, on the accelerated, uh, on acceleration of the, um, the geothermal deployment. So that will be very critical on the future of uh, the alliance and I, uh, we have already an um, broad agreement 
uh, within the alliance that that should be the highest priority in the actions that alliances are uh, alliance is going to uh, undertake thank you very much